Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, uh, we had seen how efficiencies affect the performance of uh, gas turbine engines, that is turbojet engine. Uh, in all these classes, in all our analysis till now, there is an assumption that we have made that C p is constant, gamma is the same, right. And uh, if we take uh, f into account also, fuel air ratio we have assumed to be very much less than 1 and therefore, we have neglected it. Now, we have done all this uh, and our analysis does not seem to include uh, if uh, there is bleeding from some of the compressor stage after the low pressure, low pressure compressor stage if there is bleeding, how do we account for it, okay. If C p's are different, if uh, gamma the ratio of specific heats is different how do we account for that. Now, uh, what we will do is, uh, we will do a step by step procedure that is we will go from the inlet to the outlet and we will put down what do we know and what do we need to get okay? and try and see if we can get it even with all these complexities that are there in an actual engine. In an actual engine it is not as simplistic as uh, we had assumed that efficiencies are all one and all that. So, we will see how uh, we can still analyze an actual engine with this. Firstly, uh, the T s diagram would be this is for a cycle with all efficiencies being 1. Now, if you have an actual cycle, this will be 2 dash, 3 dash, the dotted one shows the actual cycle right. Now, what we are going to do in this analysis is if we know conditions at the inlet, can we get whatever parameters we were looking for. That is, if we know P naught T naught, M naught, this is the inlet conditions and then let us say we know the compressor pressure ratio phi C, then the other parameter that we know is the turbine inlet temperature, okay. then the exhaust area A7 and all the efficiencies. efficiencies I will call it as eta i. If we know compressor efficiency, intake efficiency, then uh, efficiency of the burner, nozzle, turbine efficiencies, all this, if I know it, I will put this in eta i. Okay. Now, if we know this, can we calculate now from this? what is the parameter that we are interested in f 
that is the thrust of the engine, then the ISP of the engine, then the other non dimensional quantities that we looked at. So, we will try and see how to get to this knowing this one. Okay. So, as a first step, we also need to know in addition to this, we need to know what else? We need to know thermodynamic properties, right? Like thermodynamic data that we require are C p of uh, turbine, then C p of compressor, then C p of burner, then heat of combustion of the fuel that is q right then we need to know gamma right if we know this and if we know this, can we calculate thrust ISP, uh, non dimensional thrust and non dimensional ISP? This is under the condition wherein you could have bleed, you could have efficiencies being different from 1, and also uh, all these CPs being not equal to 1 and gamma being also different. Okay. So, as a first step. Step 1, I know T naught, I know M naught, what can I calculate from these two? I, huh? Stagnation temperature, right. I can calculate T T naught and from that I can calculate theta naught, okay. So, I can write theta naught if you remember was 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m naught square. I know m naught, so I can get theta naught, okay, fine. And I can also from this get t t naught which is nothing but t naught into theta naught. And similarly, I know uh, P naught, so and I also know theta naught, so I can get P T naught, the stagnation pressure at inlet as P naught into theta naught to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1. Okay. So, we were able to calculate the stagnation conditions here. Now, in the next step, what happens between 0 and 2? This is the intake. Here, stagnation temperature remains the same, stagnation pressure changes because of diffuser efficiencies or efficiency of the intake, right. So, if I know all the efficiencies. That is diffuser efficiency, burner efficiency, compressor efficiency, turbine efficiency, and then nozzle efficiency. So I can calculate some of these parameters. So let's do that. I need PT2, that is pressure at this point. So I'll get that by eta diffuser.
into P T naught okay. and I can get tau c is equal to pi c to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, I know P T 2 uh, I also know T T 2 is nothing but T T naught. So, I know T T naught. So, I know fresh stagnation quantities at 2. So, I can calculate quantities at 3 fine. I know conditions at 2 now. I can calculate at 3 by P T 3 is nothing but pi c into P T 2 fine. So, I know P T 2 I can calculate P T 3 and uh, I want this temperature right for an actual cycle. So, I can calculate P T 3 dash as equal to okay. So, I know T T 2, I know tau c, I know eta c. So, I can get this T T 3 dash. So, I know uh, now the conditions at the inlet of the combustor. So, next I need to know P T 4, what is P T 4? there is a pressure drop as you go from the inlet of the combustor to the exit because of a Rayleigh process wherein you are adding heat therefore, pressure will drop. Okay. So, I know the efficiency of the burner eta B into P T 3 will give me P T 4 and what is T T 4? T T 4 is nothing but the turbine inlet temperature that is a given condition. So, So, now we know conditions at this point that is temperatures and pressures. We know efficiency of the turbine okay, and we also know the compressor pressure ratio. So, using this we can calculate what is the condition at 5. What we have used here is that the CPs need not be the same. Okay, CP of compressor, CP of uh, turbine, that is the burnt gases need not be the same. So we have accounted for it, and we have also taken a condition wherein F need not be very small. Okay, or if we don't want to 
uh, neglect that part or be happy with that error, we can take into account here. Knowing T T 5 dash, I can calculate T T 5 as T T 4 minus efficiency of the turbine okay. and uh, from this I can calculate the P T 5, P T 5 is nothing but This quantity is pi t, uh, sorry, this quantity is tau t, this whole thing is pi t, okay. So, p t 4 into pi t is what gives me p t 5. Now, having known this, P T 6, in case we are using the afterburner, okay, even otherwise also uh, there is an efficiency, there is a pressure drop uh, across the jet pipe. So, we can take that into account here into P T 5 gives me P T 6 and T T 6 is equal to T T 5. If there is no afterburner, if we switch on the afterburner, then we need to take that into account here. That will be specified in addition to TIT, that will be specified to us, that will be known to us. So, if it is given, then we have to take into account that part also. And in the next step, we calculate what happens through the nozzle. So, what we have done is starting from here and knowing efficiencies and C p, we have been able to calculate all these parameters, fine. Now, we need to calculate thrust, fine. There are two conditions that can exist. One is depending on the nozzle pressure ratio, uh, we could either use a conversion diversion nozzle wherein we will assume P 7 is equal to P naught or even in a conversion nozzle a special case P 7 is equal to P naught or nozzle is choked. Let us first take the case where P 7 is equal to P naught, okay. This can be for both C D as well as convergent nozzles. So, if P 7 is equal to P naught, then I can calculate Mach number M 7 as equal to Okay. 
okay. So, I know Mach number at the exit, what can I find out? I need also A7, right. If I know A7, then I can calculate velocities, right. So, A7 is nothing but under root gamma r t 7, but I do not know t 7 as yet. So, let us get t 7 as what do we know t t 7 by t 7 is equal to or t 7 is equal to Okay. So, I know m 7, I can get, I know t t 7, so I can get t 7 and since I know t 7, I can substitute it here, I get a 7. Now, knowing Mach number and a 7, I can calculate the velocity at the exit that is v 7. I also need to calculate the uh, mass flow rate okay so mass flow rate we can mass flow rate leaving the i can do two cases one is m dot a is equal to m dot uh, a into 1 plus f is equal to rho 7 right. If I do not want to neglect f, I can write this expression. I know this to be p 7 by r t 7 into v 7 a 7. Now, here I know all the quantities, I can get m dot a into 1 plus f, fine. I still do not know what is f, we will get to that shortly. So, how do we uh, get f? If you remember when we did ISP calculations, what did we do? Huh? Energy balance. Energy balance across the burner. So, we will do that. right this is the expression that uh, we get if we do energy balance across the combustor we know this quantity m dot a into 1 plus f what we have just now calculated this will be given to us these two things are what we have seen earlier tt3 dash is what we calculated tt4 is given to us so we can calculate m dot f fine now f is nothing but m dot f by m dot a. So, I know m dot f from this, I know m dot a plus 1 by 1 plus f and using these two I can calculate m dot a, fine. 
is that clear? So, from here we get m dot a. Now I know m dot a, m dot a into 1 plus f, all these quantities. So, my thrust equation is f is equal to m dot a into 1 plus f v 7 minus v naught plus a 7 p 7 minus p naught. This goes to 0 because we have assumed p 7 is equal to p naught. So, here uh, we know this, uh, we know this, we know this. Now, what uh, we do not know yet is uh, v naught. Now, I know m naught, right, and I also know t naught. So, I can calculate uh, v naught. Firstly, v naught is nothing but a naught m naught that is equal to. Okay. So, we know both T naught and M naught. So, I can calculate uh, V naught. So, I will know everything here, right. In this equation, all these quantities are now known, and therefore, I can get thrust. And once I get thrust, I can also get uh, uh, ISP very easily. ISP is nothing but right uh, thrust per unit mass flow rate of fuel i know mass flow rate of fuel i have calculated here i know thrust so i can get isp now uh, what are the other quantities uh, the non dimensional quantities i know a not also so i can get isp by a not i also can get m dot f by m dot a a not so, all these quantities we can get by doing this analysis going step by step. One can also look at uh, there are cases, uh, there are certain engines wherein a portion of the compressor, compressed air is bled to cool either the uh, turbine, turbine blades or uh, you use it for air conditioning the aircraft, okay. certain quantity of the uh, compressed air is taken out, especially after the low pressure stage. So, you can uh, then suitably write the equation for uh, power balance across the turbine and compressor, taking that into account because there will be a reduced mass flow rate uh, through the second stage of the compressors and also through the turbine. So, going by the step by step procedure, you can calculate that and account for it also. So, in this way we can do even for a realistic engine all these calculations, it is not as if that what we did was something that is not uh, applicable to any realistic engine, this is applicable to any kind of realistic engine with bleed and other things also. Okay. Now, uh, we have looked at uh, ramjet, we have looked at turbofan, uh, sorry turbojet and turbojet we have considered all the cases that is uh, after burner on, uh, then water methanol injection, uh, conversion oh, sorry one minute I need to still uh, we have only considered one case P 7 is equal to P naught. Uh, we need to consider the other case wherein uh, we have uh, choke condition. So, let us do that first.
case when nozzle is choked we know that m7 is equal to 1. So, if m7 is equal to 1 then I know that T7 is equal to 2 into T T7 by gamma plus 1 right. So, I also can similarly get P7 as Now I know T7 using this I can get A7 as equal to and I know M7 is equal to 1. So, I can get V7 is equal to M7 into A7 and similarly m dot a into 1 plus f is equal to rho 7 by r t 7 a 7 v 7 and a similar expression for m dot f q is equal to m dot a into 1 plus f C p combustor ok. So, I know from here I can get f which is nothing but m dot f by m dot a. I know m dot a, I know m dot f. I know f, I know v 7, what else do we need? v naught, v know is nothing but m naught a naught that is m naught into. So, knowing all this I can get again f is equal to I know P7, I am given P0, M dot A is known, V7 is known, V0 is known, A7, P7 and P0. So, I can get thrust from here, I can get ISP as F by M dot F and the other non dimensional quantities that we wanted. So, uh, we have looked at uh, the cases wherein uh, for ramjet as well as turbojet, uh, we have looked at cases where efficiencies are equal to 1, not equal to 1 and for a turbojet uh, we have looked at case wherein with after burner, without after burner, choke nozzle, uh, optimally expanded flow. Then we have also looked at uh, uh, case with water methanol injection all this we have looked at. Now, let us look at uh, the next two classes of engines that is turbo fan and uh, turbo prop. Turbo prop is very simple, we do not need to do any analysis except that uh, all the power that is developed in the turbine must be equal to the power of the compressor as well as the power of the fan uh, propeller right. So, if we would do that uh, you will get the turbo prop engine that is not a big problem, but a turbo fan engine needs some effort. So, let us look at the turbo fan engine first.
So, this is a, a turbo jet engine and to this we add the turbo fan part. both of them all of them are mounted on the same shaft right now our typical conditions were this was zero after the intake we had two right this was three four five six and this is seven whatever we had done for the turbo jet remains as is. Now, for the turbo fan, you have the fan in front also and there is a certain amount of air that is bypassing and is going through only the fan portion. Okay. So, if you look at condition after the fan, we will call it as 8. Okay. And we will call the exit condition here as 9, at the exit of the fan as 9, uh, the bypass exit as 9. Okay. So, you have 0 to 2, 2 to 8, 8 to 9, that is the additional part in the turbo fan engine, the rest of it is a turbo jet engine. So, how does the thrust expression look like for a turbo fan engine? F is equal to m dot a into 1 plus f v 7 minus v naught plus a 7 v 7 minus p naught. All this is turbo jet part okay now in addition to this you will also have alpha into m dot a v9 minus v naught plus A 9, V 9 minus P naught. This is because of the fan or the bypass duct. Alpha is the okay. Now we will make an assumption that the flow is optimally expanded through both the nozzles. There are two nozzles now, one is this nozzle and the other one is this nozzle. So, we will make an assumption where we say flow is optimally expanded so therefore, we get P 7 is equal to P 9. is equal to P naught. Okay. So, this part remains the same as what we did for turbo jet analysis. We now have, look, have to only look at this part, because of our assumption here this goes to 0, this goes to 0. So, I have to only take care of this term. 
all the rest of the analysis that we have done for this for a turbojet with optimally expanded flow is valid. Okay. So, in order to do this what do we do? What are the things that we need? V 9 by V naught is what we will get. So, we need uh, T 9 by T naught and P 9 by P naught that is uh, from here we will get M 9 by M naught. So, knowing these two we can also get this portion non dimensionalize this portion and get this value. Okay. So, what is T 9 by T naught? you have T T 9 by T T 9 T T 9 by T T 8 Now, I know this quantity is theta naught, fine. This is ratio of static to stagnation conditions. So, I will put this as 1 plus 1 by gamma minus 1 m 9 square. Next is uh, flow through this duct here, okay. This is similar to the jet pipe. So, uh, if we assume all efficiencies to be 1 which is what we will do. So, here we are assuming also eta is equal to 1. Okay. So, T T 9 by T T 8 would be 1. And T T 8 by T T 2 is process across this fan. I will define a new ratio that is I will define tau f is equal to T T 8 by T T 2 and pi f is equal to P T 8 by P T 2. So, this would be tau f would be equal to pi f to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma okay fine so coming back here i'll get this is tau f into this is tt2 by t naught it is 1 so i get tau f theta naught by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 9 square. Okay. When we cascade pressures we will get this ratio also. So, let us do that. this will be P 9 by P T 9 into P T 9 by P T 8, P T 8 by P T 2, P T 2 by P T naught, P T naught by P naught. Okay. This quantity is nothing but 
theta naught to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1. This is equal to 1 and what is this? This is ratio of static to stagnation. What about this Pt9 by Pt8? This is 1, right? So, this is 1 and Pt8 by Pt2, this is pi f and again Pt2 by Pt0 is 1 because we have assumed all efficiencies to be 1 into theta naught to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1. So, if I change this to tau f, I will get all of them in powers of gamma by gamma minus 1. So, I will get 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 9 square is equal to tau f theta naught. Okay. So, I can come back here and uh, I know that this is again tau f theta naught divided by tau f theta naught. So, this is 1 which means that if all efficiencies are 1 T 9 will be T 8 right because here in the intake you are compressing it then you have a fan to increase the pressure and again you are expanding the flow. If there are no efficiencies involved, there is no heat addition here. So, T 9 must be equal to T naught. Okay. And uh, I also know that 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m naught square is equal to theta naught. So, using these two I can get the ratio of Mach numbers which will be m 9 by tau f theta naught minus 1 divided by theta naught minus 1. So, finally, I can write the expression for thrust. The non dimensional thrust you do not need this, F is less than 1, very much less than 1. So, this part is the turbojet part that we had already seen tau c tau t. Theta naught minus This is the expression that we get. Now, we need to do the compressor turbine power balance because tau f, tau c and tau t are all related. Okay. So, let us do that uh, turbine compressor and fan.
plus alpha m dot a t t 8 minus t t 2. If we deduce from this similar to what we had done, if you remember we had found an expression for tau t in terms of tau c by cancelling out m dot a with assuming that f is very much less than 1 and c p being the same, we can reduce this to tau t is equal to 1 minus theta naught by theta b tau c minus 1. This was if only there was compressor turbine power balance. In addition you have the other term minus alpha So, if we plug back this into this expression here, we will get the overall expression for thrust non-dimensional thrust. Okay. We will stop here and continue in the next class. Thank you.